Welcome to the Inspired Business Leaders Podcast, brought to you by Inspire Wealth, bringing you interviews with top business professionals, empowering you to understand our current business climate and the successes and struggles other business professionals have overcome. Here's your host, Nick Boer. Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Inspired Business Leaders Podcast. I'm your host, Nick Bohr with Inspire Wealth. I'm very fortunate to have with us today Dr. Adam Rushford from Hands-On Health Chiropractic. Really excited to have him on because he's actually my chiropractor. So um, wanted to have him on to explain a little bit about uh, his entrepreneurial journey, as well as some of the things he's doing a little differently than other chiropractors and other health organizations that share some of his visions. So, Dr. Rushford, tell us a little bit about your background and your journey and what that looks like. Yeah. So, I'm originally from the UP. I grew up there not really having any inspirations of being a chiropractor or a doctor. I just wasn't exposed to that kind of stuff at all growing up as a kid. Um, But just through trials and tribulations and working my way through college, I found chiropractic. And as soon as it popped in my head that you know, that's something I could do. Like I was full force. I just knew that was what I wanted to do. So I went to, uh, I got my doctorate degree down in Life University down in Atlanta, Georgia. I graduated in 2009. And despite the fact I was able to, you know, see a ton of patients while I was going to school down there, if you get out of school, you still don't know anything. You really, you really don't. Right. You got to get your hands on thousands of people before you really understand, you know, how the human body works how it heals, you know, how to, how to build a business, how to bill, you know, how to, you know, keep up with compliance for the million compliance things you have to be in compliance. We with. can all relate to that. Yeah, so out of school, uh, I worked for a couple different offices out of school um, as, a, as an associate, uh, kind of different scenarios. One was kind of a really high energy, but, you know, open concept, really fast paced, almost kind of like assembly line chiropractic that I didn't really like all that much. The other one was a little bit more refined, but it was a little bit too on the, almost too clinical and almost too, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, almost too sterile of an environment. I wanted like a more upbeat and uh, friendly, family friendly environment. So, you know, I was lucky enough to find this office out in Brighton for sale. Another chiropractor was selling it, looking to move out of business. And it was just one of those things that, you know, what perfect timing, you know, ready for it. It was just the perfect opportunity for me. There wasn't a whole lot in the business. I bought it about 10 years ago, but it was a good like framework. It was a good thing that I could start off with. There there's a lot of files that I could, you know, invite people back into the office, share with them what my passion is, what my goals were for the office. We started with, you know, not a whole lot, but not much overhead and it allowed us to be really, really flexible and really, you know, in the beginning, you got no money, but you got a lot of time and energy right. and a lot right. of passion. So where I wouldn't have a lot of time for marketing and getting out, I, I had a lot of energy to get out. So every, every opportunity to get out in the community, I did. And every year we just built and built and built and built to where we're at now, going on 10 years. Wow. So 10 years in business. Yeah. And, you know, we, I think we can all agree and relate, you know, uh, one or two of those years was also – uh, the COVID years that yeah. that obviously a lot of us that are still here in service oriented yeah. businesses yeah. and still thriving, uh, you had to make some adjustments during that time. So, yeah. tell us, you know, what you learned, what you what you feel you kind of achieved during that point, and how do you feel your business is better for it today? Yeah. I mean, we're we're all proud of our ability to continue to provide for our staff throughout. Uh, throughout COVID, you know, we didn't have to lay anybody off. We were able to continue to pay them throughout COVID. It was really confusing in the beginning. We shut down for a couple of weeks because they said we're we're medical necessity. Um, and, but it's like, what does that mean? Right. You know, what does right. that mean? You know, you're you're on a next step death if you don't get adjusted, or you got to sort of. So we took a couple of weeks to kind of clarify what we were allowed to do and get all the get all the equipment that we needed to provide a safe, effective care. You know, kind of what I got out of it, oh, long term, and we've, you know, we had the first year, that first year that COVID hit, that we did take a little bit of backside because it was shut down for two weeks and then we added back, we added back really slowly. Okay. It just started off with me coming in with just like emergency cases and then, and then I had set hours and then I brought in another staff member and another until we had about three months of that until we just went back full force from there. Okay. You know, what I learned from that is just that, that I don't, you know, I'm a, I'm a very competitive person. 
And it's always been drive, what's the next step? Drive, what's the next step? Drive, what's the next step? I realize that I don't have to always be like that. You know, I want to drive, I want to get better, but at some point in time, there has to be a sweet spot where, you know, I can find more of that work-life balance. You know, when we were going through that, I was all right, I'm gonna, we're going to buy a new building, where was going to be our next steps. And then after we went through COVID, it's like, you know what, maybe that's not. We don't have to just keep going and keep going. We just found we're finding a good rhythm within the office that we're at right now. And we're before COVID, I thought we were at the close of what our peak and capacity were was for our office. We were able to formulate things within our office to like go way past what I thought was our capacity in a comfortable setting. We're still like a, a really comfortable overhead for our office to operate at, right. you know, without overextending and building and creating more stress. I've got young kids and I just didn't want to make these like vital years. They're eight and ten. So okay. they still like us and they still want to spend time with us. I don't want to be so stressed out with, you know, trying to provide for this building and this business and, you know, tenants and all that, that I couldn't spend the valuable time that I have to spend with them. So. And I think that's a, that's a, it's a big, important point. You made a couple there that I can relate to. And I think a lot of our other entrepreneurs and business owners can relate to. I mean, personally, um, I think a lot of business owners realized when that happened that they didn't want to be all work and no balance. Um, I know I was one of them. And I, I learned it a couple of years prior to COVID. Uh, everyone's heard my story as far as losing my dad at a young age. And that was kind of my wake up call. So I, I've really been a big proponent of work-life balance and making sure you enjoy. So, uh, and I think you're at a, you're at an interesting point with the kids' ages because, you know, mine are late teens. Yeah. And I will tell you, mine really don't want to hang out. Yeah. And, 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 and I'll say that, you know, I really started cutting back a little bit of my work when my kids were probably 13 and 11. Yeah. So I think that you're yeah. recognizing yeah. And, well, and seeing that now. Fun, I just say, like, the, it just hit my head. I'm like, like we're halfway done with raising. I mean, it never ends, but of course not. You know, we're, we're halfway done with like the meat of raising a child and getting them to that graduation and getting them to adulthood. Yeah. It's like, and I, I, I like, I love being a dad. I love raising kids. Like the idea of like an empty nest. I've had you know, my brother's an empty nester now. I'm like, it doesn't sound like you're like that's not I fun. Like, I like the energy. I like the, the childhood energy that we have in the office and in the house. So it's it's awesome. Trying to find that balance. Well, that's great, man. I'm I'm glad that uh, you shared a little bit about your background, and you know, tell me tell me a little bit about. You obviously realized rather quickly, as you said, um, why chiropractic and why yeah. you could see yourself doing it. Tell us a little bit about how you feel like you're kind of taking a step beyond what just a typical chiropractor yeah. office yeah. looks like. I mean, I love, I mean, most people think about chiropractors, they think about the crack and the adjustment, which I love to do. And I'm, I'm really good at it. And my body's built for it. I'm tall, I'm long, I'm an athlete, I'm strong. Um, so I can deliver an excellent uh, adjustment. But what I think people are missing more than anything is just lifestyle stuff. So what I always love most about chiropractic is the chiropractic lifestyle, like teaching people how to move better, teaching people how to think better, teaching people how to you know how to eat better and then going back and repeating those lessons over and okay. over and over because like everything entropy happens you know you got to keep you got to keep sweeping the floors and if you take if you take too much time off you don't have a coach that's holding you accountable you'll, right you'll cheat and lie to yourself most people will but if you know somebody's going to ask you if you've done your exercise once a week when you come in right they're going to hold you accountable you're going to be a little bit better at it so that's one part of it the second part of it is like it's value. Like I, we do meetings, uh, staff meetings once a month within our office, and and one of our measures of success within our office is that every every visit, you know, what they pay, the value that they should receive, should should double what they actually pay. And uh, we've trained our staff, and we've talked to our staff with every meeting, and we work on that value isn't just what the doctors give. That value is like they, our, our front desk, knowing their name when they walk in. Our CAs that bring them back to the room, like having a smile, being upbeat, remembering what's important about their life. Because there's not enough human connection out there now. And I find a lot of people are just craving it. I had, I had, a, I had a patient in today that, you know, he's an older guy, a little bit lonely. And I get done adjusting him. He's, you know, Dr. Usher, I got to let you know, like, how special your staff makes me feel when I come in here. It's like, it's awesome. We also we hire for that as well. We hire more personalities and skill sets. But I know from a business standpoint with what you're trying to do and set that expectation, yeah. 
I know how important that is to hear yeah. on that page. It, is, it, felt, it felt great. To, it felt great to hear that. You know, we don't always fall, you know, we don't always hit the, the exceptional level. You know, we're, we're always trying to grow to get better. But to hear that from a patient, it was just, and it was a great feeling. It meant, it, just to know that, like, what we're trying to do affects them on more than just the adjustment and treatment level. Um, because there is a lot of bad customer service out there. And nothing drives me more insane than giving somebody my hard-earned money and getting a bad attitude or bad customer service or a lack of smile and a greeting like if you're going to be in business the least the the, the least you can do is be kind and have great customer service and smile yep. and be excited to take my money you know it's, it's it, you know it's always it's it's so funny because i think this i think as business people or entrepreneurs we can all relate if you're again if you're in the customer service yeah. or service industry I think we've all realized there's a huge lack of service. Mm -hmm. There's, you know what, that's, that's something from our financial planning firm side that we have kind of said over the years, like, you know, everyone wants to feel part of that planning process, but they don't know how to connect like, Hey, what's really important yeah. from a service standpoint? What do you want? And I always say, like, look, you can always reach me. I, I, I don't care. Like, what do you think people fail at that? Is it because of lack of training or too much like tech, where they don't connect and they don't know how to connect with real people anymore? I think they don't do enough of that. I think it's part and part. Yeah. I think part of it is, I think with some industries, mine included, there's that connotation of nine to five or eight to five. And you know what, if it's after that time, you don't really need to get in touch yeah. with me. Um, I also think it's unfortunately some of the generation we're getting into. Um, I feel very fortunate and I'm sure you do as well to have found some of your staff, your, your younger staff, because I think we can all agree that some of the younger generation, they're not, the same. <laughs> they're not, they're not hard yeah. workers, yeah. they don't take initiative, they don't care, they don't take that extra steps yeah. to, to, to not only, it's not just about impressing the boss or making the boss happy, it's you, you position leadership yeah. and, you, and you kind of impress what matters. And you hope that they take that and, 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 and do that themselves. By example, I hope they follow, yeah. That's, and I think that's something that I feel fortunate about because, you know, when, when I first brought in my operations manager, I was hesitant. Yeah. And, and the funny thing is, is it took me to take a step back and say, wait, wait, wait a second. She's the same age I was when I started in the business. And then talking to her a little bit more and she was introduced to me, I said, you know what? I'm giving her a shot. Do you have any resources that you've used or refer to people to um, work on learning how to manage like this, this new generation, the <sighs> you know, millennial generation? I know there's books that I've seen out there. I'm not, not, not in particular. I will tell you a lot of this is in the, in the, in the trenches of it kind of learning. Um, I, I personally have been in management uh, at bigger corporations in my earlier days mm -hmm. and that, taught me a lot of how to manage because there was a lot of times 10, 15 years ago, I was actually managing people that were 20 years older than me. So having that ability to do that and now looking at it, the flip side, I mean, to say she's, she's 20 years, my junior is kind of like, Okay, first of all, I'm old. <laughs> Second of all, holy cow, how is she 20 years my junior? But you know what? All of these are similar struggles that I think business owners and entrepreneurs yeah. face because we all have hesitations on not only, um, not, maybe not age bias, but, but just if we lump this generation or a generation as a whole, I know personally I might manage or lead a little differently just based on when I what I learned about them right away but also just the connotation in the world yeah. and what I've seen so I think it's always interesting to see someone in your industry take the initiative right up front yeah. to kind of say customer service matters yeah how we're going to be there and smile and greet our 
our, you know, our, our, our clients or our customers. It, it's funny. I was just going to joke with you and say, so wait a second. So you're saying I'm not the, I'm, I, I'm not special. Yeah. yeah. But you know, cause every time I walk in, you know, it's it, depending on who it is, that if I talk to them more than others, well, they know I'm selling a house. They're asking about things like that. And it's, those are the little things as you've already said, that I think most people don't realize how important it is. One thing I've always kind of, I always go back to this with my staff that I've always liked the idea of like, we're a busy office. You know, when you're a busy business, mistakes are going to happen. Yep. But good customer service will almost always cover up mistakes because you can have people are understanding if you have good if you're humble and you you fess up to it and you have great customer service people will forgive you the the best service will not make up for shitty customer service so it just won't i don't care how good you are if your customer service is awful and you make me feel horrible about you know calling you or trying to get you out to do work i will not do business with you right no i i I your customer service is always always trumps and always helps and always helps to cover up things if mistakes happen I think that's a very, very good point. So help me from a, from a business perspective, um, what do you think is one of the best things you've done to get to the point you're at where you can say, you know, I feel like we're not only efficient, but we do a really good job at helping yeah. people. Yeah. You know, I've, uh, I've, I've worked with, I've done like a minimal amount of coaching with a couple of chiropractors that, uh, that, have, that kind of wanted to see what we do. And I've, I've purchased a couple uh, offices from chiropractors that just didn't make it in business. I think the biggest thing that I see that, that people try to do is they try to do it all themselves. You know, chiropractors, they come out and they're loads of debt and they're cheap and they want to save money. Yep. And so they try to do absolutely everything. And what happens is when you're adjusting and then billing and then managing the taxes, all that other crap that you don't love to do, it takes away from your joy. It takes away from your passion and it burns you out like that. So from the beginning, I was, I'm, my number one goal is to quit everything in this office other than the things that I love to do and I'm really good at. So my goal is I just want to, I want to do, I want to do patient interaction. I want to do promotions and I want to do innovations, figuring out how to do this better and figuring out how to tell as many people as possible how good we are and how much we can help them. And then those people that do come in, like nurture that relationship, nurture their time, all the other stuff that I've, I've got tax guys and I've got I people. Say, you got people. Way better than me. At yeah. Yeah. You got people. Me, it would take me a day to do. It will take them an hour to do. And it's so much more efficient and it's worth that money. It's worth wow. spending that money and getting it in somebody else's hands and off my shoulders. I yeah. think that, and I'm not just going to say the the medical field. I've seen this a lot with entrepreneurs and business yeah. owners over the years. That um, just as it, from a business standpoint, we all we all can can believe and we can all see that we're really good at at, at what our main job is. Yeah. And why are we trying to do all the other little yeah. things that it takes to run a business? And part of it is what you said. Some people are like, you know what? I just can't afford it. I can't do it. I need to do it myself right now. And sometimes sometimes that's okay. But other times you need to say, you know what? I'm not good or efficient at this. And if I bring on someone, even though it's going to hurt for a minute, we're going to grow or be that much more efficient that much quicker. You got it. And that's, I think that's so important because even personally, um, I probably should have hired someone sooner. Yeah. And, it, and, it's, and, and part of it was like, well, I, I can do this, I can do that. And, you know, but it's also because I think for a lot of us, I've seen so many business owners over the years that are really good at what they do. But as you've said, they try to do so much, but they also, a step further in that, in doing so much, is a lot of business owners aren't actually as good as they think they are at actually running a business <laughs> and it's it's interesting and that's why i when i started commenting on i'm not just saying medical but i will say that's one of the most common ones yeah. it is i i see more times than not where a doctor's office or a dentist's office if you don't have a, a phenomenal office manager it, it doesn't run well. You're going to flounder. You're not going to collect all the billing that you need to. I mean, all of the things. It's hard to do it all. It is, it is so hard. And yeah, if you hire somebody to do some of those things, even if you are really good at it, they might not be as good as you. But 
you need to free your time up for doing what's most valuable for the office. So yep. Somebody else do the other things. Let go. Yeah, they might not be you, but if they were you, they'd have their own business. <laughs> you know, you yeah. gotta share some people. You gotta, you gotta realize that yeah, there might be a little decrease of efficiency with what they do because they're not you, and they don't have the passion, the love for your business that you have. But you can't expect that. <laughs> they would, they would have their own. I, business I was gonna too. say you can't expect that, and you also, you also know that. And they need to know this too, that as a business owner, you're the one taking all the risk. Yeah. You're the one putting up all the money. You're the one paying all the bills. And at the end of the day, you're the one that not only do you have the passion, but you also have the ability to say, this is on me. Yeah. If, if this doesn't work, it's because I didn't make the right decision. Do you, do you show your staff that? Do you show your staff like the extra things, the extra stresses behind the scene, or do you sometimes, do like open book management? Some, anything like sometimes that? I do. Right? You know, sometimes I do. I, I will say, you know, uh, my operations manager and I have a really, really good um, open relationship from a from an asset management standpoint as far as what our firm manages. Um, I've kind of tied our growth and how much in assets we get to, and she gets a pay increase. Oh, oh. So, and at some point, she's in the she's in the process of, of getting her insurance license, yeah. which will allow me to incentivize her on some of the insurance strategies we use. So, it's an ownership deal. So, yeah, we do profit sharing in her office. And I we think do, that's great. We do collections bonuses in her office. And I try to do once a year, um, like, open book management, where I open the books and say, all right, I know, I, know, I know you guys see how much, you know, the credit card machine says at the end of every day, but these this is where all the money goes. This is what rent looks like. This is what our payroll is every two weeks. This is all of these different things. And and bring it back to, you have to remember that every task that we do in here has a dollar amount added to it. And if you want to make money, like I know you do, and I know you want to make more money, we all have to become more efficient at what we do. And so when I'm on you about being more efficient or doing things right the first time and not having to go back, that's why, because I want us, I want you to make more money and have more joy with what you do. Yep. And I think that's so important because being able to, properly and effectively motivate your staff mm -hmm. and show them that you do care yeah. and that you do want the, the, the end game is not only efficiency but it's also effectiveness because not only does it help them it, it helps everyone yeah it helps the customers it helps the clients it helps you as the business owner and it helps them yep and that's really at the end of the day we're all in business for one reason or another i mean we're not in business a to not make money and B we have a passion on some level and and in both of our businesses is about helping people so I, you know I think from that perspective that's so important um, I'm more curious at this point and I don't know if this is a question you've gotten before but if you can look back at your 10 years in business and you could change something that you feel would have would would have bettered you at this point what would it be? I think I think what I'm much better at now that I wasn't in the beginning because I've always uh, at my core I'm you know I'm a people pleaser. I want to make people happy. So I've always been more of an I've been more of a non-confrontational type person. Um, and in the beginning, it was not having those those small confrontations with staff okay. early enough. Okay. And it, both with staff and with patients too. Like we just wanted, and we first started, we just wanted to help people. And, you know, I'd have patients that, you know, were tight on money and we, we'd let them run a little credit and we'd say, just make sure you're making payments and just, and, you know, we, well, of course, we got screwed in the long run. And then you have to take people to collections and, and, that, and that costs money. Yeah, and then it's like, is it even worth it? it? Yeah. So that, you know, not, you can't please everybody and you no. have to protect yourself. And then just being, I think what I've done really well the last couple of years is I've been like ridiculously specific about the finest details of how I want the office run. And when I see something, I don't wait. I, I, I approach it right away. Okay. And because the longer you take, the more uncomfortable it gets, the more, you know, that molehill turns into a mountain. Um, and I've even, when we do our team trainings, I just, I, I keep going back to, I'm going to continue to jump on things as soon as possible. It's not because I don't love and appreciate you, because I know if we don't address them right away, how uncomfortable and how resentful one another can get towards one another. So, you know, just getting, get, being more, being more, not aggressive, but being more comfortable with that confrontation, I was not great at it at the beginning. Okay. I'm much, much better at it right now. And it would be the one thing 
thing because there I lost a lot of great employees because I wasn't confrontational with them enough. I didn't tell them what my expectations were, and I didn't hold them to them those expectations the way I should have in the beginning. I think that's uh, that's great that you recognize that. Yeah. Um, you know, sharing. Uh, similar to me, I can tell anyone, anyone right now, um, I wish I would have, I would have hired, uh, you know, an administrative type person yeah. earlier yeah. Um, because I feel like I could have, I could have a done more, grown more, been more efficient, not had to work 60, 70 hours a week to do it because I'm trying to do everything. Yeah. So to kind of recap and then, you know, kind of going toward closing here, um, setting realistic expectations early and often with staff and with clients. Um, also, it sounds like you not only you not only have a competitive team environment, but you also have a very fast paced fun environment. Um, you also hire more for personality than skill, which I think is a very, very undervalued thing in today's world. You can teach skills. You know, personalities, hard worker, somebody that's a people person. You can't that's teach hard. that. You can't you teach, can't teach that. Somebody that just is, you know, just wants to sit back like that and not talk. It's you can't you can't teach them that out of somebody. You know, somebody no. that's negative. You can't teach that out of them. You have to. So you just you hire those types of people and you teach them how to do all the skill things that anybody can learn. You know. Dr. Rushford, it's interesting because I was on a I was on a mastermind call with with other business owners yesterday in my field, and um, one of them actually asked the group, and there's like ten of us, that specific question. Like, I'm looking to bring on a junior advisor. I interviewed three, and I'm struggling because the one that is not the the the, the, the experience in the industry might be the best fit. And all of us kind of stopped and said, okay, one guy from Minnesota and myself both said right away, um, our, our best hires ever had no experience in the industry. And that, he kind of laughed because he's like, she's from the hospitality industry. I'm like, perfect. Yeah. She is a people pleaser. She she goes above and beyond. She knows how that works. Hire, hire people that have worked at a restaurant before yep. because they don't pace. They they know how to no matter how busy they are to present the smile to that next table they go to hire somebody that's been in sales yep. because they're more comfortable looking at somebody that's across the table and say yeah it'll be two thousand dollars for care today and not be nervous and anxious about it you know those are those are two big things that I look for you know the other big thing that I would also bring up to you if you if you haven't you know thought of this but I'm sure you have because of of how long you've been successful in doing what you do but you know I think it's I think it's great to be looking at it also not only the environment of as you said restaurant or sales but there's how many people out there right now want to get out of that yeah. and i'm just thinking mentally like i don't want to have to work weekends anymore i don't want to have to work every evening yeah, I, 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 I don't I, 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 yeah people are getting angrier and they're not tipping like they used to yeah. and so i think that's great that you're looking for people like that. I think there's so many service oriented industries that if your business or your practice is service oriented or customer service oriented, I think that's where to me, people. That's a, it's a phenomenal place to find people. Like that's actually where I'm starting whenever I'm looking to add. Going for a meal and flipping your card. <laughs> so it's, it, you know, I think that's important uh, as a business owner. I, you know, if, if you're a business owner and you're not thinking outside the box and you're struggling to find and hire people, I think that's one thing that I would, I would take away from this, this episode yeah. is think outside the box. Yeah. You know, try to find, as you said, people, personality versus skill, because skill can be taught. Totally. totally. Yeah, uh, that's the biggest. I've got a ton of patients that are business owners, and the, all of them can't get enough people. Can't get enough people. Yep. Can't get enough people. That's yeah. what we all hear. We can't yeah. get enough people. Okay, well, what, what, are you, what are you looking at? Yeah. So it's, you know, it's interesting, and I, I've really enjoyed our, our episode today. Is, is there any, any last thoughts? that you want to share with our audience before I ask you to share the best way to get a hold of you. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I, I'm a big believer that, you know, with a business or health or family or life, and uh, there's a, a saying from another podcaster, Jocko Willink, discipline equals freedom. 
being disciplined within those things in your life is where you get freedom. You know, there's mornings that I don't want to get up and meditate or work out or whatever the heck it is. Right. I do it with a point of if I don't do this, then I cannot lead my, my patients the way I want to. I'm not going to have the energy I need to. I'm not going to be able to play with my kids. So having that discipline, motivation, it, it, it's like caffeine. It's going to dip on you. But yep. having discipline in life is really where you find your greatest joys. And it creates so much more freedom, you know, freedom with your financials, freedom with your health, freedom with your business. If you're disciplined with your structure of what you do. Oh, that's great. I, uh, I appreciate, uh, again, having you on and your time. So help me, any of our listeners that are listening, and especially some of our local ones uh, that are local to the Livingston County or the, the Western Oakland or, or yeah. Southern Genesee County areas, what's the, what's the best way to get a hold of you guys to reach out? I mean, obviously, you know, I know where you guys yeah. are. So hey, tell our listeners that. Yeah, if you just want to kick the tires and learn more about our office, you can go on our website, www.hohchiro.com. We're also on Facebook as well. You know, if you just search us on Google, you can see all of our good reviews that we have on there. Um, our office is right here in Brighton. We're on the eastern end of Brighton. We've been here for the last 10 years. If you have any questions, you know, you want to send me just some questions about chiropractic, um, you know, in a, in a non-threatening way, you can email me anytime that's D.R. Rushford, that's R-U-S-H-F-O-R-D, at H-O-H-Cairo.com, or you can call the office at 810-494-1900. Well, Dr. Rushford, again, I want to thank you for your time, and, uh, you know, obviously I'm a little biased because I am a, I'm a patient, so I think you've, uh, you've done a great job, yeah, and you run, a, you run a good business, so uh, any of our listeners... I give my two cents and, and reach out if you're if you're looking or think you should be looking for a new chiropractor or a chiropractor as a whole. I want to thank all of our listeners for taking the time to listen to the episode. Uh, and again, this is another episode of the Inspired Business Leaders Podcast. I'm your host, Nick Bohr with Inspire Wealth, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks so much. Have a good day. Thank you. Appreciate it, man. Thank you for listening to the Inspired Business Leaders Podcast, brought to you by Inspire Wealth. To learn more about the topics mentioned on today's show, or to listen to past episodes, visit www.inspiredbusinessleaderspodcast.com. Thanks again for tuning in, and we'll catch you in the next episode.